So here is Node Red. Now um, I'm not going to take you through setting up an MQTT server. It's fairly straightforward, and uh, this is actually running on a uh, Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, I just did, followed some simple instructions um, on my own channel on YouTube and also Peace Goggles website. There are plenty of instructions on how to set up a Raspberry Pi with Node Red and also with an MQTT server. And on Pete's site too, there is actually a script that he maintains which will actually do the entire thing for you. You just download Raspbian from the Raspberry Pi site and then you run this script um, in a terminal session under SSH and it will download and install um, everything including Node Red, MQTT, um, a database and many other tools that you would use to operate a home control system. In this case what I have set up here is this is the the part up the top here that handles the login. This is subscribed to my MQTT server. All it is is the MQTT QTT servers on port 1883 and it's got a host name of home control. Um, the topic that it's listening for is ESP log on and that's really all you have to configure here. The ESP log on uh, control which you can download from uh, just doing the standard NPM installs and then you just point to this. I'll provide a link for this as well in the uh, posts. And description you just give it then the, the um, longitude and latitude of where you are and that way uh, all of the timings and the date and time and all that kind of stuff can be set up automatically it also calculates the dawn and dusk so that some of the modes when you're setting the GPIO you can actually set it to automatically turn the relay on at dusk and go off again at dawn uh, plus a whole bunch of other scheduling capabilities that are built into the code that we just uploaded to the ESP. And then the MQTT out pin here uh, merely sends out all of the information necessary for that node that's trying to log on uh, to allow it to uh, function correctly and it gives it its date and time and everything else. And we can see that in this debug window. If I just literally turn one of these modules off, um, this second string here actually serves no function except to listen to everything that gets sent to the MQTT server and everything that comes out of the MQTT server. Um, whether it comes from the actual ESP node or whether it comes from node red. So I've just powered one of the modules off, uh, the Sonoff one, and I'm just going to turn it on again now and in just a moment you should see a couple of messages. There they go. So the first one, the topic is ESP logon. That's the ESP in the Sonoff going out to the MQTT server and saying, hello, I'm here. Can you please give me some information? I need to know what the date and time is and when dusk and dawn is for wherever I'm located. The node red responds with this in the universal time format. Um, which is the date time and then the dusk and dawn parameters also come in here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. This gets sent back to the unit and now the unit will be quite happily flashing in a um, interval state here. If I just turn this off again for a second and just repeat that exercise, just powered it off now and see the lights stop flashing. Just going to plug it in again. You'll see it will flash quickly for a few seconds and then once it receives that logon packet from node red it'll stop. Powered on. See it's flashing on there. Now it's gone away. It's getting the packet and now it'll be off and then just give the intim in, uh, intermittent on flash there. Right. And what it's done is it sent another um, hello I'm here and then it comes gets a response to say here's the date and time, here's when dusk and dawn is. So all well and good. The next thing that I've set up here on Node Red is simply uh, the ability to read the an analog input from one of the nodes and if I click this uh, it's actually sending it to the um, one that has the node identifier, let me just make this bigger, of uh, 5E4 at the end of it, which is actually um, the ESP201, I think. Yeah, because the other one is the, uh, that's just been logging in here, is the 2301, and this is the 55E4, which just responded. 
with 199 to that ADC call. And if I actually want to make this talk to the other unit, which is the one that just logged in, um, we can actually take its identification here. All right, we just need this. We'll copy that. We'll go to this design window. And we can actually just copy this. And we'll put it here. And we'll change that to be the new number. What it's doing is just sending out the topic as being the name of the node to the MQTT server. And then that particular MQT, the node that registered is listening to the MQTT server for, the, for anything that um, says um, it's identifier slash 2ESP. So that 2ESP is the topic that all of the ESP nodes that log into MQTT are listening for, but they're all prefixed with their um, ident. Now, they also listen to just 2ESP as well. Uh, and every once in a while, this ESP logon node will send out a new time sync to everything. But rather than know all of the ones that are around, it sends it to a generic topic, which does not include the actual ID in the front. So this is one of the features that's built into all of the program that Pete's done, is that if you want to address one node, you just put the node name in front of it. If you want to address all the nodes, then you can just say to ESP, and it will actually send it to all of them. So anyway, that's that's fine, and we'll demonstrate that in a moment. So what we've done with the switches, I've got one which says LED, which is going to talk to the uh, ESP201 here with this LED on it. And the other one is going to talk to this Sonoff with, and you will hear its relay clicking on and off, but you won't see any indication on here. Um, so what I've done is the um, ESP... 55E4 is the one that is the Sonoff. The 55E4 is the one with the LED on. It is the uh, ESP201. So here's where it's reading the analog value each time and showing up down here. Okay. And the other one, which is the um, Sonoff, is the AF68. And I can hook that in here as well, um, deploy that under node red. And now I can actually, let me just clear this. Uh, I can actually trigger that one to do analog reads as well. All right, so now I'm just flipping between the two of them, quite happily reading away. Okay, all nice and dandy, but there's obviously nothing connected to those ADC inputs. The LED is sending out to the 55E4 uh, which is the same as this one. And the relay is sending out to F68, which is the Sonoff. And that will then cause the relay to turn on and off. Now, the way that you access these with Node Red is you simply go to the Node Red slash UI. And this is the actual display that it gives me if I am running the, the basic UI for this. All right, so there's the displays. There's my control. So there's Node Red. There's my control, and there is my camera. So let me just move these around so that we can see things a little clearer. So when I click things on the panel, and this could be on a smartphone or anything else too, um, then you should see the uh, relevant light, or you'll hear the relay clicking on and off on the Sonoff. And then you will see messages appearing up here as well, because we've got the debug turned on. So let's give that a try. So I'll do the LED first. See the LED turning on and off there right away. Now let's do the relay, and hopefully you can hear that. It's on, off, on, off. And that's really it. That's all it takes to um, set up some simple interface. Now, just to show you that that actually is um, a legitimate connection, I'm just going to connect my phone. And um, I'll put that inside the camera view as well. So there's the same application, but on my phone, we can just about see, have everything in view here. So now if I just do the LED, you can see as I turn that on and off, not only is the light coming on and off, but the uh, web browser on my PC is also synchronizing to it. 
and then the relay. I don't know if you can still hear it, I got the headset back on again. And all the controls are synchronizing, so now I'm doing that from my smartphone. Now, obviously, it's just a case of arranging your firewall. Uh, it's your home and you could access that from anywhere you like. But that's all there is to it. Now I've got a Raspberry Pi running with MQTT and Node-RED which can form the heart of my home control system and it could also run one of these web pages here quite easily so that you can control it locally on your Raspberry Pi with a nice LCD display if you want. Um, we have the Node-RED with MQTT running in the background and providing this website page for us. And that's all nice and easy. Now, the only other thing left to really show you is um, the Imperi Home application that can also allow us to do this. But I'm going to save this to another video because this one's getting a little bit long. And we'll go through all of that. I do have other videos with Imperi Home in there if you wanted to have a look at them. But you can see that that is very, very easy to reconfigure a uh, relay board to get it to work with a simple user interface and everything right now that you've just been seeing is all running on my local network using a Raspberry Pi, a smartphone connected to the Wi-Fi network, browsing to the Raspberry Pi web page here and being able to turn lights on and off. Now you can make these graphics whatever you like and make it all nice and pretty. You don't have to have Node Red running to do this. You can actually have a web page directly talking to the MQTT server and responding appropriately if you wanted to do that. That's pretty much it. All nice and easy, simple to do. So I hope you like that. I know we were going into a lot of detail there and hopefully I can clean it up and shorten it a little bit when I do the editing and things. Uh, anyway, so let's um, call that quits and uh, that'll be great. So see you next time.